Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and lately I've been getting a lot of questions about virtual reality. What I think about it, what are my pros, what are my cons, and if I really enjoy it over triple screens. So I wanted to put those thoughts together in a video, and I'm going to take this Porsche GT3 RS around the Nürburgring Nordschleife in a Seto Corsa. So first off, we got to pay the toll, boop, and let's get going. So, for reference, I bought this Oculus Rift CV1 from my local Best Buy when it went on sale for $399. There is no corporate sponsorship or anything. These are just my raw, unfiltered thoughts. So, I've been testing this for around four months. I have very limited testing with the HTC Vive, none in sim racing though. So, I can't really vouch for the HTC Vive if it's good or not. So. I'm just going to make it about virtual reality in general, and let's get started. So, I just oversaw that corner, but, uh, so, I think I'm going to make it five things I like about virtual reality, and five things I don't like. So, if you want a more in-depth look, I also have a review of the Oculus Rift. I'm going to have that link below in the description. Also, I'm going to have an annotation on top right unless my editor is an idiot and forgets. So, at least I'll have it in the description. But, I am also just gonna do a quick rundown and talk about what I like, what I don't like, and let's get started. So let's start with the first thing that I like, and that is one of the things that you don't hear talked about too much in reviews, is that you have two focal points looking through the Oculus Rift. You have one, that simulates your left eye, one that simulates your right eye. When you drive with a monitor, you only have one focal point per monitor. So it's more or less driving like you're a Cyclops or you have one eye closed. With Oculus Rift, you get the depth of field and the 3D effect because you have two focal points simulating your eye. And that works great. It gives a solid sensation of speed. I find myself hitting my uh, hitting my marks a little more often which is great and it works really well the next pro I have is it uh, I sort of alluded to it it has the solid uh, depth of field and sensation of speed I'm gonna bunch those both into one because they kind of go hand in hand because if you think about it the depth of field is seeing further away. It's being able to perceive distance. And when you can perceive distance, you can have a better perception of speed. And this is great. You really have that solid benefit of being able to see where you're going, see where and how fast you're going. And the depth of field and the spatial perception, which I'll talk about in my next pro, really does give that solid immersion factor. So as alluded in my previous pro, uh, my third pro is you have the solid spatial awareness. The field of view and that feeling of being in the car is there in a way that isn't really there in a monitor. So consider, with a monitor, you have to calculate your field of view and guesstimate your size and that idea of being in the car. With the Oculus Rift, it feels right. It feels like I'm actually in the car. Nothing feels too big, nothing feels too small. And I just hit the wall, whoops. But yeah, so you really get that idea of I'm in the car. The steering wheel in front of me feels just right sidewise or size wide ah, tongue tied but that really does speak volumes in itself just feeling like everything is the right size as opposed to something feeling too big or something feeling too small my next pro I think this is number four is the head tracking so I, over up there, I have the Oculus Touch sensor. That sensor calculates 
where my head is turning, where my head is moving, what I am actually doing. And it works great. I did a little bit of track IR. There's also a utility in the past. Well, I think it was track no IR, which used a webcam to track your head. And those never really worked too great. It felt like you had to compensate in some way to make it work. For this, it tends to feel like there's no compromises. It tracks your head in all directions. Up, down, left, right. And it, again, feels right. It feels like you are moving in three dimensions. And you can also get a second sensor if you want to have better for looking backwards. But at least it works all right. And yeah. There's not really much to say about the head tracking, but it works, and it works well. So, hold on a second. Right, there we go. So, now I have to think for a second, what would be my fifth pro? Because this, okay, fun fact, this is a totally unscripted video. Random idea, popped it out. I have no writing beforehand, so this is totally unscripted. So, I'm thinking what my fifth pro would be. Just thinking, thinking. Okay, here's a good fit, uh, pro. The headphones. Oculus, or actually, yeah. So this, I think, might be exclusive to the Oculus. But let me think of an actual pro in... Uh, for VR in general, and I'll just give honorable mention to the headphones. So, my fifth pro, what would it be? I gotta think, 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 think. think. Okay, so fifth pro is Wow, why didn't I think about it before? Okay, the fifth pro is it's easy to get immersed. You don't have to like, think too much about calibration setting up. So think about it. With a triple monitor setup, you have to set it up just right. You have to line up the bezels. You have to calculate the field of view and compensate for the bezels. But, dang it. For the little stutter there. But with the Oculus Rift, you put on the headset, set it up, and you're good to go. And this works great. And you don't have to think about bezels. It the bezels and also just the limited vertical field of view. That detracts from the immersion. But if you think about it, you look up, you look down. Look left, look right. No bezels, no problems. And that is awesome. So, okay, we got through five pros and one lap of the Norch Life. Let's pull this car in and get ready for lap two, and we can talk about some of the cons. So, like any product with pros, there are definitely cons, and with the Oculus Rift CV1, this is no exception. This is a first generation VR product. Let's pay for a second lap. And let's get going. And talking about some of the cons. So the first con I would have is you need a powerful computer to run it. You need a powerful computer to be able to run it with solid settings. So when I bought my Oculus Rift, I had a GTX 970 graphics card from NVIDIA. And I was realizing for racing games, it's not going to cut it because unlike a display, like uh, a monitor, which usually they can start okay at maybe 30, preferably at 60, and it's better if it's higher, with the Oculus Rift, you're going to want likely a minimum of 90 frames per second. That's, that's a pretty tall order to ask. but. I ended up upgrading to a GTX 1080 
and it works pretty well. I still have some hiccups, I still have some issues at times, but this runs really smooth. I can feel it is running at 90 frames per second, and when it does run at 90 FPS, it's pretty smooth. But you do need a strong PC to get you there. So that would be my first con. The second con would be the resolution and screen door effect. So if you think about it, the way the Oculus Rift is set up is it has two screens that you're seeing, as mentioned in my pros. Each screen is 960 by 1080, which is resulting in one main 1920 by 1080 combined panels. What that means is each screen you're seeing is half the resolution of 1080p. And it's all right, it's all right, but it, it could be better, I think. And I believe the Oculus Rift is slightly lower resolution than HTC Vive, but the HTC Vive has the same issue, although slightly less pronounced. And you can see every single individual pixel. You can see every pixel on this screen. And that's been dubbed the screen door effect. And I think that is a fitting name. The screen door effect is an apt naming for that. It doesn't ruin the experience, but it does detract. Because part of racing is you want to be able to look far in the distance. You want to anticipate your breaking points. You want to be able to look forward, spy out those breaking markers, and be able to break and hit your or hit your marks. When you aren't able to see as far in the distance, that does sort of take away from the experience. But all in all, it is okay. But I think, especially next generation headsets, they're gonna be able to resolve that. Next con is you have a relatively limited field of view. So this is another thing where I believe the Oculus is slightly worse than HTC, but both of them suffer this issue, where I think the Oculus Rift has approximately a 110 degree field of view. So when you're looking through the headset, it more or less looks like you're looking through binoculars or some sort of goggles. You have that effect. So in your peripheral vision, you see black. And another thing, peripheral vision, that is something that is used in racing, uh, especially like looking out at the corner, checking your mirror. So you need to turn your head more when looking in mirrors, looking around, dang it, <laughs> and just driving in general. You have to be more deliberate in moving your head than you would in a real car. So that, I think, is my third con? Yeah, first con was uh, the... Uh, yeah, that's third con. Fourth con. Fourth con would be the motion sickness. So this is something that is hit or miss for some people. I tend to not get motion sick. I tend to be okay. But... I had some friends who tested out. I had some friends who tested out VR and they almost hurled on my floor. So it's definitely a your mileage may vary situation, but there are a few things I think that can ta be taken into consider or consideration. So the first one is if you have a less powerful PC and you're not getting that full 90, that is something that I've commonly noticed can cause people to feel queasy and that I've had that happen before. I did a test live stream I've done some test videos in the past where I tried doing a VR video and it made me feel sick because I was taking too much out of my system and that meant I was getting less than 90 frames per second at some point I was getting less than 60 so that was causing me to feel queasy. That was causing me to feel a little sick. 
And that is something that can happen if you have a less powerful PC because it's not as smooth as you would expect. So that jerkiness, that would make you feel motion sick. And then another factor could be if you have less than perfect vision. So the less than perfect vision means if you don't have like the 2020 vision and you're already like vision impaired in a sense, and you could have looking through this and it's still already a little blurry even with me having 20-20 vision so if you don't have 20-20 vision that issue might be compounded by the virtual reality headset and sometimes glasses can't fit in this headset if you have a larger pair of glasses you might have that struggle but I know some friends who wear glasses they tried it and they were feeling queasy within like 20 minutes or so so keep that in mind if you are vision impaired in a sense or you don't have as powerful a PC sure you can always turn down settings too but I'd say the 90 frames per second is a priority in sim racing the last con I am going to say is that you have this tether on the back of your head. This is common with both headsets. And you, you can feel it. Uh, the common term I've heard is cable drag, where you move your head and sometimes you feel the cable on the back of your head. And that can be distracting, that can be a slight immersion breaker. But ultimately, your mileage may vary. This is more of an issue with games where you're standing, moving around. But for racing, it's not too bad. But yeah, so those are my five pros, some of my five cons with virtual reality. All in all, I enjoy it a lot. Actually, dang it. I'm going to make the court an honorable mention. My real fifth con would be you're completely isolated from the world around you. So consider, I have no idea where the buttons are on my wheel right now I have to sort of feel it out and then also if I had a tack on my wheel I can't see that also with these headphones I'm largely isolated these are closed back headphones which means I can hear around me but at the same time someone could in theory try to sneak up on me and that could be a scary thought at times but all in all VR, I get a thumbs up. Thumbs up on that. It works well. It works great for what it attempts to do. And that is immerse you in the experience. I just did two laps around the Norch Life. And I made a few mistakes. But, oh man, it is so freaking immersive. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah, I recommend at least try out virtual reality give it a try find a friend who has it try it out and see if you enjoy it so here are my thoughts or expanded thoughts on virtual reality i would love to hear some of yours just let me know in the comments what you think if you like this video please hit that like button if you haven't already please subscribe and stay up to date on upcoming videos for the sim racing paddock i'm william marsh and you have a great rest of your day.